In the name of God who creates us, who empowers us and loves us unconditionally and empowers us for ministry. Amen. Amen. It's a joy to be with you here this morning as this community of faith continues to gather together for worship, but now gathering with a new confidence in what a new future might be following the isolation we've all endured during the pandemic. The new future will not be a return to whom we have been, but will be formed and shaped by people of faith who are open to where the Spirit of Christ is guiding and directing them now. And it is very important both to know and to realize that the Lord's Spirit is always bearing witness to the love of God with life-giving power. So with hope and courage and conviction, we disciples of Jesus Christ are open to many new possibilities in carrying out the ministry of our Lord in this tumultuous world. You have one new awareness of the new future already given to you. I'm told that during the pandemic, you as a community reached more people than ever before with the good news of God's presence and love among his people. Thanks to the creative use of modern technology during the more difficult months of the pandemic, there are many sisters and brothers who now are a part or feel that they're a part of the St. John Divine Community. You have a clear calling and responsibility to continue to interact with them with arms opened wide. Do not miss the opportunity to evangelize them. And yes, there's another awareness of the new future already given to you. This is the bitter, sweet, soon to be leaving of Father Wiley and his family from among you. I know Father David's leadership has been appreciated on many levels of ministry with you. But I'm also aware that you have accepted and nurtured him in ways that have given him new understanding and a new discovering of the gifts the Lord has given to him. You have helped prepare him well for his new calling, enabling him to go forth with new confidence in the years ahead. In a few weeks, you will be sending David and his family off with great thanksgiving and with your blessing. In the gospel lesson this morning, we find Jesus and his friends, his disciples, crossing the Sea of Galilee again, this time moving from teaching among the Gentiles on one shore to meeting again with their Jewish sisters and brothers on the other shore. As they step ashore, immediately two different encounters with Jesus occur. Both of these encounters initiated by persons with a strong faith in the ability of Jesus to respond to their significant need. We shall explore this faith in Jesus in both of these encounters with him. A leader of the synagogue named Jairus fell at the feet of Jesus and begged him repeatedly, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be be made well and live. Jesus immediately went off with Jairus following this entreaty. Notice that there are no ifs, ands, and buts in the plea of Jairus. His faith in the ability of Jesus to heal his daughter 
is absolute. His approach is both strong and convincing. He knows in his heart and soul that Jesus can bring healing and salvation to his daughter and to all who turn to the Lord. It's interesting to note that this absolute faith in Jesus is found in a leader of the synagogue. In most situations where Jesus is confronted by such a leading figure, it is at times when the leader is confronting Jesus about his teaching and ministry, times when there is the clear desire to discredit Jesus and to dismiss his teaching as false and blasphemous. But obviously this was not so with Jairus. He was a strong believer in Jesus as the one who brings good news of the new life in relationship with God. But as Jairus and Jesus and the disciples and even the accompanying crowd moved toward the home of Jairus, someone came from the home and declared the terrible news that the young daughter of Jairus had died. There was no need to trouble Jesus any further. Jesus, hearing that news, said immediately to Jairus, Do not fear, only believe. Do not fear, only believe. We find Jesus saying that over and over again in the Gospels. And the crowd continued on despite the terrible news of the daughter, about the daughter. We know then what happened. Jesus encountered people weeping and wailing loudly. And when the Lord rebuked them by emphasizing that the child was not dead, only sleeping, they laughed at him. Jesus nevertheless entered the house with his disciples and the members of Jairus' family and revived the girl. The girl immediately got up and started walking around And Jesus told her family to give her some food. Faith is absolute trust and confidence in Jesus. Here in this encounter, in the face of death, do not fear, only believe, is the calling for radical trust, even in the most challenging of circumstances. And the question is obviously posed for us. Do we have such absolute faith in Jesus as healer and savior for us? Do we have such radical trust in him even in the most challenging of circumstances in our lives? The other encounter with Jesus was made in the midst of the journey to the house of Jairus. An unknown woman, suffering for 12 years with hemorrhages that no medical treatment could heal, had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, believing that if only she could touch his clothes, she would be made well. This woman sees Jesus as a miracle worker whose power flows even through his garments. This is a rather superstitious faith in Jesus. She was wrong about the power of the garment itself, but she was right in her confidence of Jesus as one who cares deeply for those in great need and as one whose divine power can even make her whole. When Jesus felt his power doing the work of healing, he wanted to know who received this healing. The woman confessed to him in fear and trembling, falling on her knees before Jesus, and told him her story. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. 
Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Your faith has made you well. Very different faith from that of Jairus, yet a faith that Jesus affirms is one that engenders healing and wholeness and salvation. Obviously, the faith of the woman progressed into a deepening understanding of Jesus as her Lord and Savior. And the question for you and for me is posed anew. Is our faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior absolute and unwavering? Are we ready and willing to be transformed by his divine power to live the life he offers to us as members of the kingdom of God? Do we and will we place our absolute trust in him as the bearer of God's saving grace for us.